If you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello, comrades, and welcome back to the Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, товарищи. The topic of today's video is smoking in Soviet Union. And once again, I'm not the best candidate to tell you about smoking in the USSR since I never smoked in my life. Well, I tried smoking. I didn't like it back when I was a kid and a teenager and I stayed that way. But this is a pretty interesting topic, so we're going to talk about it. I guess I was lucky that I didn't start smoking because my father was heavy smoker all his life. He finally quit smoking at the age like 65 when he started having serious issues with his lungs. Uh, my grandpa, Sergei, that I spent every summer with in the village, he smoked. Um, many of my friends started smoking when they became teenagers, but I just happened having no interest in smoking, and I think I'm going to stay that way. Now, first of all, I would like to tell you about my grandpa. Since I spent there uh, a lot of time in the village with him, uh, my grandpa uh, smoked his own tobacco, so-called Mahorka, so the small uh, area in the garden was dedicated to tobacco, uh, so he grew his own tobacco, he dried the leaves, and then he crushed them, and he was making uh, cigarettes uh, using uh, pieces of newspaper, and, you know, you rip the newspaper in the exact same size, you apply uh, tobacco inside, you roll it up, then you uh, put some saliva in the end, and then you smoke. So you can imagine, besides the fact, you know, tobacco is bad for you, we all know it now. Uh, so those uh, homemade cigarettes or papyroses, they had no filter, so that's bad. Tobacco bad. And you burn newspaper, so you burn the ink, which you also inhale, so that's triple bad but this is how a lot of people out in the country were smoking they were making their own uh, papyroses cigarettes and the only difference was they used uh, so-called mundstuk a lot of uh, older folks i look at a translation and the only translation i found was a cigarette holder and it seems like back in 30s 40s and 50s was primary the stylish way of smoke cigarettes for women but in Soviet Union, a lot of guys who smoke uh, homemade cigarettes use this mundstuk, a uh, cigarette holder. That way, you don't you don't get you don't get your fingers burnt when you try to smoke the whole thing. You know, up to the end, uh, your fingers don't get yellow. Uh, so that was just a practical way of uh, smoking your homemade uh, uh, cigarette because you utilize pretty much the whole thing. My grandpa never smoked inside in the house, but I adore my grandpa, I love his stories about the World War II, and I tried to copy him, of course, as much as I could. So once in a while, he would make me an empty uh, cigarette shell, just a rolled newspaper, and he will lit it up for me, and I'll be running around a yard with this... Um, roll of paper in my mouth pretending I'm smoking. So I said, I'm very surprised that I didn't start smoking because I was very actually excited to copy my grandpa and smoke just like him. Uh, we also had a neighbor in the village. Uh, his name was Misha, Mikhail Makan. Uh, he was also a World War II veteran and he lost his arm in the war. So he was uh, only had one hand. Uh, so I was also hanging out with him quite often as a kid, um, helping him in a little bit while he was chopping firewood. Since, he's, since he only had one arm, it took him way longer. And that was always fascinating for, for me to watch how he was rolling his own uh, cigarettes using Mahorka tabak and in newspaper pieces because he had only one arm, so he had this whole technology um, utilizing you know, his stump of his other arm 
uh, to lay the newspaper piece and then apply uh, tobacco and then roll it up and apply saliva and smoke. So as I said, my whole childhood was actually around smoking, but fortunately I never started smoking. Looking back, my general impression that pretty much everyone, like male, uh, man, everyone smoked at least like a blue collar, which is I grew up in a blue collar family and kind of the whole area was blue collar. And so all guys smoked. Um, but according to statistics uh, in 1980s, about 65% of uh, male population in Soviet Union smoked. So I guess just like everywhere else, people with a higher education, you know, white collar workers, there was maybe 50-50 uh, percentage of smoking. But as I said, I remember only, I think, one guy in our uh, building that I knew for sure he didn't smoke. And it was, like, really weird why he's not smoking because that was a normal thing for everyone. Uh, you know, you meet someone, you start chatting, you start a cigarette, and you smoke, and you talk. I think one of the reasons why smoking was popular, uh, well, some, you know, teenagers just they think it's cool, although we didn't have really like advertising, like in here, there used to be in America that you could see it's on the uh, road signs and on TV and magazines, newspapers, uh, cigarettes and smoking was advertised like a cool thing to do. But, you know, some teenagers, it's kind of the sign I'm, I'm grown, I'm start smoking. But in many cases, I believe um, army, military service, it's where the people really started smoking. And what was happening is like whatever work you do, for example, you know, soldiers are digging trenches, then officer says, all right, uh, everyone, let's have a 15 minutes or 10 minutes smoke break. People who don't smoke uh, will continue digging. So pretty much people just in order to have a break and take in and rest up, they will start smoking just to get a break, get a smoke break, because that was the only kind of break you can get in army, smoke break. And then, of course, you know, nicotine is a strong um, addictive drug, and then you are smoking for the rest of your life. So a lot of guys I knew, um, they went into army, you know, being like a health freaks, working out, uh, not drinking, and then, then come back, they smoke. That was really weird. But at the same time, not many women smoked. So that was interesting. Like, I don't recall any women uh, in early years that I saw on the street smoking and the ones who maybe did smoke, they were hiding because it was really like, you know, people would look at you, I would say not really approvingly, if they see a woman smoking. We actually had this saying, if you see a girl, you know, a lady smokes, is smoking, uh, you assume, well, she's either an actress or she's a whore. So there was only two uh, type of personalities, two type of women were smoking whores or actresses so uh, first time i've seen a lot of women smoking was in leningrad in 1986 uh, when we went um, when i stayed there for about a month after the chernobyl explosion and that's for the first time i noticed there was a lot of women on the street smoking and that was a real shock for me and this is one of the things like uh, I tried to date once a girl who was smoking and she was smoking hot and smoking and I, I just couldn't do it. It was horrible. It was like kissing the ashtray and uh, we, I, like, I think I met her twice and I quit. When I was maybe seven or eight, uh, this is when I first time tried smoking. Uh, me and my friend Dima, when we were again in the village, uh, we stole some uh, papyrosses from his grandpa and he smoked a papyrus is called Bielamor. It was a really popular brand. Uh, the box of Bielamor, the price was 22 kopecks. So you can buy a loaf of bread and you still have some change. A loaf of bread was like 16 kopecks. It had 25 papyruses. And I remember uh, we snuck in the house when he was gone fishing. And we just were curious to try. We stole a couple of papyruses. Then we hit on and climb some tree and we sat there and I tried them. I remember coughing. I was like, well, this crap is disgusting. And after that, I don't think I uh, smoked. I think many years later, I tried uh, some um, imported, I think it was a brand called Moore, M-O-R-E. Uh, another friend of mine, his parents brought some of those cool cigarettes from Kuwait where 
um, he was a guy was working. He was a military officer, and I think at that time Soviet Union sold some uh, anti-aircraft systems to Kuwait. So he was uh, servicing there, and they brought a bunch of foreign goods, including those cool more cigarettes. That I remember trying them, but once again it was disgusting. So fortunately, I didn't pick up smoking. So even if there was no advertising for cigarettes and smoking in Soviet Union, USSR was still uh, taking a third place in the world after the United States and China for amount of uh, cigarettes produced. And we had as interesting, you know, we had they had a tobacco factories like there were two tobacco factories in Moscow. We had a tobacco factory in Kiev, and so a lot of big cities had their own tobacco factories. But they were manufacturing uh, so-called statewide brands. So, for example, there was a, a Stalichny, Cosmos, uh, Prima, Vatra, uh, different uh, cigarette brands. Like, they didn't belong to anyone, so they were just producing them. But sometimes people would be checking out because depending on which factory manufactured those cigarettes, quality could be quite different. Um, so people would be uh, like, okay... I prefer, it's the same brand of cigarettes, but I prefer Ducat factory versus some other Moscow factory because quality was so different. So now we're going to talk about some uh, cigarette brands. The least, I won't say expensive, but the bottom would be after homemade, of course, tobacco. It was a Papi Rosses called Bielamor. They came in a box of 25, and the price was 22 kopecks. And a lot of, uh, so, you know, Papi Rosses, they had, part of it was a tobacco, the rest was just empty, no filter. And that's where you hold your fingers, people usually like crease it there. Um, and another brand was uh, also quite popular, were so-called Kazbek, and the price was 30 kopecks. So, you know, you can ride the bus six times because the ticket to ride the bus, like in Kiev, uh, was five cents. So it's uh, six times. You, you can buy six, you know, six tickets for the same price and a, as a bus ride. So if you look at the modern prices in America, you know, if you buy a bus ticket in New York, maybe $1.50, so times six. So pretty much it's where the price is right now in America for the... As cigarettes. Then the next step up will be uh, basic cigarettes without filter. Uh, was Prima, 16 kopecks. And as I said, uh, different factories produce different quality Primas. And Prima was actually one of the most popular uh, cigarette brands for the blue collar workers. It was really strong, uh, inexpensive. And uh, I remember my dad started complaining when after Soviet Union collapsed and the foreign companies came and one of the first things that uh, foreign investor foreign investors were interested in is was cigarette factories. So Riestma, I'm not sure, I think it's a German company, they purchased a Kiev a tobacco factory and they started producing same brand Prima because it was popular but with better technology. My dad started complaining that before, like if they go for smoke, you know, they, they all light, uh, lit up cigarettes and people, most of guys didn't have uh, lighters, you always use matches, so they will light cigarettes and start talking, then he said, you know, middle of conversation, uh, your cigarette dies, so you light up again, and he said, usually it's like three, four times you need to relit cigarette. If you get distracted a little bit, it you know doesn't burn on its own. You need to constantly puff it, or need to relight it. So that was the Soviet quality Prima. Now, when the German company took over and they improved the quality, he started complaining and said, "My goodness, uh, that cigarette never stopped burning." He said, "We used to, you know, you just you smoke a little bit, then you talk." said, I'm talking next thing, I know my fingers burn because by the time I was just yapping with my friend, that cigarette burned itself up and I just wasted whole cigarette because I'm just in the habit that if I stop uh, puffing the cigarette, it's just going to die. And now it's just, you know, it's such a good uh, dry tobacco that it just burns by itself. So he actually wasn't happy about 
quality uh, got improved. Actually, Rietzma, I believe that's the name of the company, they tried to uh, claim that it was now their own brand, Prima, and there was a big uproar because it was considered like no one's brand. So they, they tried to make their own and uh, forced everyone else to quit making that brand, but I think it, uh, in the end it didn't happen. Uh, local Ukrainian brand was Vatra, 25 kopecks, and Astra. And Astra was actually funny, it has a nickname Asthma, because Astra, Asthma sound really close, so that was a joke, let's get a box of Asthma. Um, that's my favorite smokes. And then we're moving up to like real cigarettes with filter. Uh, and some of them were pretty, uh, quite expensive. And usually, you know, you could tell it was almost like a status. Like if you see a person smoking all the time, Stalichne cigarettes or Cosmos, uh, then they're like, hey, he has money. He smokes expensive cigarettes because the price was around 70 kopecks, so like almost triple the. And the cigarettes was filtered. They had a different. Uh, Qualities was like called class. So it's a first class, second class, and third class. And of course, quality of tobacco was different. So Stalichne was popular, and if you look at the box picture of Stalichne, it kind of reminds you of Marlboro, doesn't it? Then Cosmos was another brand. Diplomat. Temp. Express, Zalatoy Runo. Another, that's quite interesting uh, brand was called Soyuz Apollo. So remember uh, during, I don't remember, I guess, 70s, uh, we had this uh, space project when uh, Soviet space station or uh, space vehicle uh, and American Apollo, they managed to connect. So they made a cigarette called uh, Soyuz Apollo, and I believe Philip Morris was part of it. So that was also, we had that brand of cigarettes, Soyuz Apollo. Besides Soviet brands, uh, we apparently exported, imported, right? So when you bring in, you import. So we had imported cigarettes from Bulgaria, and there were quite a few brands from Bulgaria. Uh, Radopi. Stewardessa, Apal, BT, and one was called TU-134, so that was named after a Soviet airplane. So Bulgarian uh, cigarettes were pretty decent quality, uh, inexpensive, around 35 kopecks per uh, pack of 20. So a lot of students were smoking those cigarettes. We also had cigarettes from Cuba. Ligeros and Partagas and the rumor was that that was pretty much whatever Cubans were making cigars all the trimmings were uh, grounded ground and uh, used for the these Cuban cigarettes and uh, shipped uh, to Soviet Union. Also we had uh, cigarettes from India believe it or not Madras and Kriest and I couldn't figure out, uh, some people said they were good quality. I think Crest was a decent quality of cigarettes and Madras wasn't that good. And uh, by license, a factory in Kishinev, Moldova, was manufacturing Marlboro. That was really cool and very expensive cigarettes. One pack was one ruble. And of course, if you smoke Marlboro, uh, you're a cool guy. And on the black market, uh, you could buy uh, Marlboros, like real American Marlboros, Camel, Kent, and Salem cigarettes. Those were illegally brought in by sailors or pilots who uh, flew international flights. Prices were really steep, from 3 to $5 uh, rubles a pack. That's a lot of money, but you know, some people were had money and they wanted to smoke quality tobacco, so they could uh, purchase American cigarettes in the 80s, but they had to pay a lot of money for it.
as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a smoker, but when I looked it up, apparently the number one cigarettes were considered Cosmos. So that's a mean space. And they were good quality. Of course, some factories produce better quality than others. The price was 70 kopecks, so not cheap. But they also came, and it's interesting, in hard box. So hard pack or soft pack. And hard pack was better quality than soft pack. And number two was brand was Java, or like Java, you say in English. Price was 40 kopecks. So those were the most uh, popular, good quality cigarettes in Soviet Union. Also, there was a brand from Moldova, considered really good, but wasn't available over in the uh, Soviet Union, it was called Doina. And apparently, generally, Mol uh, to Moldovian tobacco and Moldovian tobacco factory products were considered the best in the Soviet Union. I'm planning to make a video later on about different hobbies in Soviet Union, but one of the mo uh, popular hobbies was people, uh, some adults, some children, uh, that were collecting empty cigarette packs. And of course, if you can get some foreign cigarette packs, like Marlboros or Camels, they'll be super cool. But we had uh, quite a few brands, as I said, besides those uh, popular statewide brands, there were quite a few local, like, for example, Vatra was mostly Ukrainian brand. So some people had a quite extensive collection of empty cigarette packs and some people uh, collected uh, match boxes from matches because we you know, also had a different uh, kind of matches. So that was a, quite a popular hobby for people it's to collect cigarette packs uh, and also uh, match boxes. Okay, so this is my story about smoking in the USSR. I hope you like my video. As always, don't forget to put the likes, share this video with your friends and the social networks, and uh, thank you so much for your support of my channel, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания.